welcome to Super Scary. I am Nicholas. I am Bender. And today is uh, double feature number two. Yes, we are going to be talking about uh, two films that we went out and purchased blind. Uh, had no idea what they were, had never heard or seen of them. So those films are Contamination and The Mutilator, which I left at home. So you only get to look at Contamination, sorry. Oh, and we'll just start with this one since it's right here. Yeah. Both of these movies that we're going to be talking about, we picked up uh, at Suncoast Video. They are Arrow Films releases, craft brew of, uh, of Blu-rays. Yeah, excellent packaging, excellent art, excellent transfers of these old films into Blu-ray. Uh, excellent special features that Arrow takes pride in creating brand new special features for these weird underground forgotten horror movies really movies that a lot of people probably wouldn't even think are deserving of such a treatment you know? yeah and arrow gives it to them but and i'll also say this um the the treatment that they give these movies only heightens your appreciation for them so if yeah. you if you uh if you see an arrow films release that you're even mildly interested in picking up do it because um they're great, and, and you'll end up loving the movie even more after watching all of the, yeah. the stuff they include. It's great, great company, great company. So, Contamination here. This one, uh, directed, written by uh, Luigi Cosi in Italy, um, mm -hmm. in America, in the U.S. He went by the name uh, Louis Coates. <laughs> well... And, uh, and he what, also directed the Hercules movies with uh, Lou Ferrigno, if you've ever seen those. No, I haven't. No? Okay. No. Um, also a notable release from him was the Italian version of uh, Godzilla. So he took the original Godzilla movie, got the rights to it to release it in Italy, and through his Spectrorama 70 filter over top of it, which was like a psychedelic trippy filter and included scenes of, of the Hiroshima bombing from World War II so you get like real dead bodies that have been decimated by an A-bomb. We're going to try to find it. We'll and, find and it. bring it to you. The, the poster of it was in, uh, the very first cover of Fangoria magazine so we feel like we need to see it. Yeah we'll, we'll do that one at some point. But as for this film <laughs> uh, there's a uh, yeah we'll I don't know. The plot is not important. Not at all. Um, I'll, I'll say, I, I was thinking about this, uh, as this is our second take of this video. Um, the plot can basically be boiled down to, they find a contaminated ship. They find the eggs. 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 <laughs> they uh, analyze the eggs and decide they came from Mars. They meet up with the only astronaut that's ever been to Mars. And then they go down to South America to find the coffee plantation where the eggs are coming from. Because that's where the queen cyclopean alien sits and is shipping out these eggs to the rest of the that's world. It. That's, that's it. That's it. That's the movie. Like, I, there's not even spoilers in there because it's just that bare that, you, you don't watch this movie for the plot. No. It's just to see people's chests bursting open using the same effect over and over again which is it's fun there's you know, it's, the, the gore like really it's not terrible no like, it's just the same thing over and over again yeah you know i so, mean in the first like 15 minutes there's probably like six yeah six chest bursts and they all happen exactly the same way yeah. it's like it's like they they saw that one scene from alien and they're like what if we just did this for an entire movie yeah yeah <laughs> And, and, they, and they did. And that's kind of what you had to do um, if you were making Italian movies in the late 70s. Yeah. From what I read is, is producers, studios wouldn't green light your film unless it was a ripoff of a film that had already been successful in the States. So that's, that's it. That's, and that's, uh, that's what Italian filmmakers did. And that's what they did with this, of course, ripping off Alien. And Italians went and saw them. They didn't even care. Yeah. They were like, yeah, we'll take 15 different versions of Alien. Yeah. And they saw it. So uh, <laughs> the only really other notable things in this film is it has horrible overdubbing. Yeah. Particularly the scene where uh, the Lieutenant Eris is being held uh, behind a 
window and they turn on the speaker mm -hmm. and listen to him complain. <laughs> For security reasons, your personal effects were destroyed. You'll be issued an overall. Overalls? Overalls? What about my credit cards, my Gucci watch strap, my wallet, my badge, my badge? I gotta pay for Make sure he gets dressed and give him a room in the officer's quarters. Yeah. And also, uh, the scene where Hubbard uh, slaps the shit out of the female character. Who's, what's, what's that her was, name? That um, was uh, Colonel Stella Holmes. That's just so that we understand one another. She legit pretty much respects him for the rest of the movie. Yeah, it's like it's like super gangster. It's yeah. like she's just like you won't hit me, and he's like really, and then she's like all right, cool, Matt. And they have an un understanding, and yeah, and they're they're super cool after that. And that's it. Those are the those are the those are highlights from Contamination. Yeah, so, so it's worth watching at least once. Yep. Um, I didn't get a chance to check out all the special features on this one, but I'm going to because they're there, and, and uh, I did watch a few on the mutilator that we're going to jump over to here, so say yep. goodbye to Contamination for now, and uh, let's flip on over to uh, the mutilator. Also uh, originally entitled Fall Break. Yes, which uh, it's, it's kind of unfortunate they didn't stick with that because they have an amazing theme song that is left in the movie. Whoa, what a, what a, a ball break! Yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. Yeah, so uh, The Mutilator, written, directed, and produced by Buddy Cooper, who had never made a movie before and has not made one since. Dude's my hero. Like, uh, he basically one day, he, he sort of found himself with $86,000 uh, and then was just like, you know what? I'm going to make a movie. I've always wanted to make one, and so I'm going to. And then he did. And it's awesome. <laughs> and, and if you watch some of the behind-the-scenes stuff on the, the Mutilator, it's amazing when you see this guy to think that this this person just yeah. randomly wanted to make a slasher. Like, he doesn't fit the, the stereotype at all. He was know? a lawyer prior yeah. to making this movie. And just, well, I think I want to make a slasher flick. That seems like, like fun. A fairly gruesome one at that. Yeah. So that's what he wanted to do, and he did it. And, uh, yeah, originally titled Fall Break, decided, well, he, he was kind of pushed, nudged, yeah. pushed uh, aggressively to change everything about the film. Initially, with the Fall Break title, they had a, a completely different movie poster. Um, they had uh, a bunch of promotional materials, the trailer that... Once he got to the d distro studio, they basically told him it was shit, and they made him throw everything away. And they're like, "We'll we'll have our firm come in here and redo this for you, real nice." And you're gonna change the title to the Mutilator, and that's what uh, they ended up going with. Yeah. So this one um, it stars Matt Mit Matt Mittler as Ed Jr., mm -hmm. Ruth Martinez as Pam, Bill Hitchcock as Ralph. Connie Rogers as Sue, Francis Raines as Linda, Maury Lampley as Mike, and Jack Chatham as Big Ed. Yeah. Um, the beginning of this movie starts off with uh, a kid who's going to surprise his daddy mm -hmm. for his birthday by cleaning his guns, and uh, he ends up accidentally shooting his mom. More like ends up blowing his mom away. Yeah, really. through a door. <laughs> through a door. <laughs> that's Very bad best, luck. That's the best part. He shoots her through a door in the back, and her back sort of explodes out, and then she just dies. And then the dad comes home, and uh, I thought it was kind of hilarious, because he kind of crouches down and looks at his son, and he's just kind of like, I'm gonna get you for the <laughs> and then like drags the dead body into his study and gives it alcohol. Yeah, he pours himself a nice drink and then he puts the glass up to his dead wife's mouth. Rather than like rushing to call the police or the, or the ambulance, ambulance you know, or like any he's just like my wife's dead. Yeah. Like maybe she could have been saved if you didn't just fucking weird out and yeah. pull her dead body into your uh, den. I don't, I don't know. Really, really. 
I, I think it's one of the weirdest openings to a movie that I've ever seen. It's just yeah. a very strange, odd way to, to start things off. But that's how it starts. And, uh, and then you, you uh, fast forward. Um, you find out that uh, the kid from the opening, that was Ed Jr. Mm-hmm. And, and you go right to him. He's a grown up. He's sitting around drinking some uh, Budweisers with the, or I think he has a Budweiser. Everyone else is drinking natural light. Yeah, I noticed. You, you get a, quite a few shots of natural light in this movie. Um, and these are these are all of the, the characters we mentioned earlier. I, again, much to kind of like Contamination. This is another film with really kind of a bare bones plot. Yeah, a very thin plot. There's there's not a lot to look at. I mean, well, not a lot. There's a plenty to look at, but there's not a lot to analyze, really. It's just kind of like, son kills mom, fast forward, son is with group of friends. Son gets a call at the bar yep. where they're hanging out. Which is weird. Yeah, I don't understand how that happens, but he gets a call at the bar, and um, it's his dad, or someone speaking for his dad. I don't, I don't know, that seemed kind of murky to me. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Somehow, he gets the message, hey... Uh, you need to go up to your dad's condo. Um, Close it down for the winter. Because he doesn't feel like doing it. Or he's dr- yeah. he's too drunk to do it. He's, right. he's on another one of his... Uh, his benders. Yeah. Like me. Like you. So then, uh, because it's fall break, yeah. uh, all of uh, Ed Jr.'s friends decide that they're just going to tag along and they're going to have a nice weekend at the beach condo and then they're going to shut it down. And the drive up to the condo is when you get that fall break. Excellent yeah. song, yeah. And a nice montage of them all having fun and yeah. uh, doing all their little shenanigans on the way. I like when, uh, when uh, what's his name, Ralph just kind of strong arms a kindly old black gentleman <laughs> at the convenience <laughs> store into giving him the senior discount. Yeah. Yeah. But then the, the, the guy at the counter is like, I got that senior discount. I always make him buy two. Yeah. Yeah. So Ralph kind of gets strong armed into buying it too, anyways. <laughs> yeah. So they arrive at the beach condo. Um, when they get there, the doors open. There's a huge mess of alcohol bottles everywhere, and uh, they don't contact the authorities. You know. They, they say uh, Ed says it was probably his dad. May have had some friends over, and it doesn't probably. look like anything's missing except a battle axe. That's the only thing that he <laughs> sees, is, is which his the dad place. probably took home with him. Yeah. <laughs> so this place is a mess. The doors open, alcohol everywhere. There's a missing battle axe, and Ed Junior's rationale here is: well, if um, if I don't hear back from my dad and get confirmed that he's the one who took it by tomorrow, then, then I'll we'll call, call the, the police. Cops. So, I don't... I, okay. We're just going to ignore it. Yeah. Um, After this, you really just get kind of... They're, your typical teenage... You know, I don't know if they're teenagers in the movie, but you get your typical, college like... College age. Hey, you know, it's time to party, blah, blah, blah. Sort of just like... Whatever. Um, a unique thing about this movie is that there never is any question as to who the killer is. No, they established that right at the beginning. Yeah, like, it's Big Ed. Yeah. Big Ed is, is hanging out at the condo, creeping, and they show this right away. Yeah, you He's, sort of assume, I guess they never say it, but you assume that like he has invited his own son so that he can kill him for killing his mom. However many years ago. Yeah, it's been like 20 years or something. But, and, and now, and it's kind of like uh, Ed has brought along his friends, and so his dad is kind of like, well, guess I gotta kill his <laughs> friends too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Big Ed's creeping around. There's uh, one thing about this movie, especially during the scene in, uh, in the swimming pool, which is um, one of the first big kill scenes in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's the soundtrack. This movie feels much more like a 70s film to me than an 80s slasher. I think the soundtrack has something to do with it, and also the colors that were used, which uh, Buddy Cooper talks about in one of the documentaries. Uh, They wanted it to feel kind of dark and, 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 you know, earthy, as opposed to a lot of the 80s movies you see. are very neon and, and such like that, so... Yeah, I think this scene overall, as much as, like, as good as the music is and everything, I think... It's kind of like, really, 
like that's how she's gonna die in the pool. Yeah, it's a bit strange. It, you know, they're they're playing a game of hide and seek. You know, and it's yeah. like as soon as one goes down, the other one comes up, and it happens so many times. Right. That it's just. I know you have to suspend your disbelief when you're watching a movie like this, but still, maybe if it would have happened once, mm-hmm. but they miss each other so many times, and then the one time when the girl finally does get taken, the the dude, uh, what was his name, um, Mike, yeah. he would have had, he was underwater for so long, like, he didn't yeah. come up at least one time and see something happening, like, yeah. I don't and know. then, like, I love how he just, like, gets out of the pool and starts following the trail of clothes like yeah like i mean i guess right. if, if they're playing like a little sex game and she's leaving yeah, the clothes, yeah, yeah. i mean that's whatever maybe that's kind of clever for big ed to think of but mike follows the clothes and uh and ends up getting himself into some trouble when he <laughs> i love his death scene too because he just like he he like oversells it really bad yeah but not like in a good way it's like he's just sort of like oh no oh, 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 oh. just like and just <laughs> and it goes on for so long yeah <laughs> after, well, so long after he's had anything done to him right it's kind of like a you know then, you're not sure if it's a chainsaw or like the boat I think motor, it's the that, boat they, motor. Yeah, yeah. that they mentioned earlier in the film yeah but he's just sort of like i can't i can't even he's like mildly inconvenienced yeah. by how you know he's moaning as if he's like stubbed his toe or like hit his funny bone on something yeah you know and then he kind of drops to his knees and just sits there yeah like doesn't even fall over no. like that kind of bothered me <laughs> yeah. that he just hits his knees and then like that's it Mike's yeah. dead that's it so you know that's that's something um and you know like like most slasher movies out you get your you get your first kill in and then it is kind of like just a who's gonna die next type deal yeah. There's a little bit of concern from the other friends that Mike and uh, who's who's the girl that he's with? Was it Linda? Linda, yeah. yeah Mike and Linda. Th- there's a little bit of concern that Mike and Linda haven't come back, but not but too much. They all sort of decide to go to bed anyways. Mm-hmm. Like they take a walk down the beach. Yeah, looking first, for them, and then, but it's a very half-assed looking around. Right. It's like they just stroll the beach. They don't really even look. No. They're just kind of talking and they run into the cop on the beach yeah uh who quickly bites it yeah (laughs) but um yeah so like like i said the movie sort of just follows your typical kind of slasher formula you just kind of wait for everybody to die but when i i did uh write down that when um when shit's going down towards the end i'll leave it a little bit of yeah, mystery well, as, as far little. as like who lives and who doesn't but yeah when shit's going down pam um she has good instincts because she's like let's fucking go uh-huh. let's leave yeah let's just get the fuck out of here and there's one person who's like no we have to stay and keep looking and but i have to commend pam because so many characters in these types of movies are all gung-ho about all right let's split up you go this way and uh-huh. i'll go this way she wants to get the fuck out and so I have to give her a thumbs up for, yeah. for good instincts on that. Um, uh, I want to throw in, a, you know, a, li- a little bit of a spoiler, so I apologize for that. But, uh, well, I won't say who, but there's a particular death in this film that I, watching it, I really felt like this was the first time I'd kind of been off-put or upset mm-hmm. by a death. Now, the death is comical in the sense that like the person barely screams despite what's happening to them yeah but uh, it's you'll know you'll know it when you see it because the death kind of has this weird unintentional i feel like this unintentional like sexual connotation to it and uh you're kind of thrown off by it because you're given you're given no inclination that ed senior is like weird about sex, you yeah. know. So when this 
something happens to this particular character, it's it's a little unsettling. Yeah. But I commend this movie for that. I was surprised and almost happy to have that that feeling happen because I'm I feel like I'm so you know disenchanted with horror movies. Well, they they talk about that on the excellent documentary. Can't mm. stress that enough. Um, but they they go into some detail about the particular scene that he's he's talking about. And, uh, you know, don't want to give away too much more about the movie. You should definitely watch it. I think that it it really does deserve to be more well-known than it is. Yeah. There's another, you know, there's another film uh, called Intruder that bills Bruce Campbell, even though he's only in, like, the last three seconds of the movie. But if you've seen or heard of Intruder, I feel like The Mutilator is on the same level as intruder um it just in sort of like notoriety and whatnot i actually i read a list the other day and it was talking about the you know 10 most underrated horror movies of the 80s and like sleepaway camp was number one and i was like i don't really but sleepaway camp it's underrated but it's way more well known than yeah and other things and there were uh, there were several movies on there like that but the mutilator mutilator was not included on the list and it was like right after i watched it so it was like this should be on there in my yeah. opinion um so it's it's definitely worth a watch and i would say it's worth a pickup too oh yeah i, I mean I, once again because we can't stress it enough the the arrow release you know tra- track it down check it out uh, a lot of Arrow, speaking of which, uh, a lot of Arrow releases are UK only. They're, they're a UK-based company, but they are starting, it seems that they're starting to release a lot more in the US, uh, which is good for us, because they, they, they do a great job. And the, the, doc, the documentary on The Mutilator, after watching it, I just, I love the film. Like, I, I can't even explain how much more... Uh, or how much um, more admiration I had for it after watching it. That's how good the documentary is. And, and it shows you the care that goes into the releases that they put out because they track down as many of the original cast members as possible. You get to see what they look like now. And uh, it's cool, especially in, in the Mutilators um, documentary, you hear about just how much of a, a blast they had making the movie. And they have... Um, you know, all sorts of pictures and a little bit of footage from the making of back in uh, when, when they were actually filming it. And to hear the stories of being on set and all these people becoming such good friends and how the mutilator is, it's just built into the lore of the, the little island where they, they filmed it. Yeah, this you is know? kind of like, that's, that's another cool thing about the movie is like, it's kind of the biggest thing to ever happen to this small island town. And so... To this day, people are still stoked about it, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of the location. Well, there's not many locations in the film, but yeah. you can still visit some of those locations. Like they're still standing, they're still being managed. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the motel where the entire crew stayed is still there. the The manager of the motel is actually featured in the documentary. Yeah. So I mean, it, it was a very close knit production, and it meant a lot to the people of this community, and it still does to this day. So. Yeah. Uh, definitely watch the documentary if you pick up the film, too. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a wrap on our second double feature. Once again, make sure to check out The Mutilator and Contamination. Not to put down Contamination, but I would say if you were going to watch one of these two, The Mutilator would, yeah. would be the one to watch. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable in saying that The Mutilator is the superior film of this of this uh, double feature. It's got charm. Yeah, lots of lots of eighties slasher charm, which yeah. is right up my alley. Uh, so tune in next week for our as yet undetermined film. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're starting our new cycle. So you know you're gonna get a couple. Uh, we'll try to hit a classic film. We'll hit a modern film. We might hit some sort of local film. All leading up to our next double feature. Uh, for episode 15. Yep. So tune in for all that. We'll see you next Saturday. Until then, I'm Bender. I'm Nicholas. Have a scary day. Ah! Ah!